From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist and this feast of all souls. My name is Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is Adriana Dieu van Voorden from Humber Village, Newfoundland, in memory of her sister Annie, who lived a life of grace and kindness in the care of new mothers. The second is the Osborne family from St. John, New Brunswick, for the healing within their family and in thanksgiving for the blessings received. The third are Noreen Crosby and family from Don Mills, Ontario, in memory of her husband, Richard, for the living and deceased members of the O'Connor and Crosby family, for the good health, God's blessing, and for the souls in purgatory who have no one to pray for them. Our thanks to the donors for the gift of this Mass. This month, as you know, is dedicated for the praying for all those who have departed and gone before us with the sign of peace. We have a, remembrance book, a book of remembrance as we remember all those who are connected with this or connected with our families who have gone before us marked with the sign of peace. Deacon Mike Walsh tells me there are over 15,000 names in that book. So let us pray for them in a special way during this Eucharist. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. God of glory to the faithful and life to the just, by the death and resurrection of whose Son we have been redeemed. Look mercifully on your departed servants, that just as they profess the mystery of our redemption, so may they merit to receive the joys of eternal happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered, those who reproached him. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For all die in Adam, and also we made alive in Christ. But each in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who lose love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it to eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know that my Redeemer lives, and on the last, in my flesh, I will see my God. It is with this in mind, all of us hope to die. I know that my Redeemer lives, and I'm going to see God. But after we die and before we go to heaven, what happens during that time is so badly understood among all of us. I remember as a child, we were told there was a time and we could say prayers. And so I would say prayers after prayers, uh, mutter great, um, what they called spiritual ejaculations for in honor of the saints. I would attend mass, say the rosary. And I felt that I had amassed at least three centuries of, of time between the time I died and the time I went to heaven. That is the way we understood it. But how false that is. Nobody has come back from the dead to tell us what happens during that time after we die and we enter into heaven. Many people think it's a waiting place where we fill up all the forms, we take a number, and we wait until we are called to heaven. But as I said, nobody has come back. Jesus has risen from the dead, but he hasn't told us what happens during that time. So it's a waste of energy, a waste of emotions, and a waste of time to try and speculate. So what do we know about it? We know that even from the Old Testament, there was a time when people prayed for those who had just died. We hear it in the book of Maccabees. After the war, when they found that all the soldiers were dead and around the place, they checked them. Those who had amulets to foreign gods and idols, they left aside. The others, they buried with great ceremony. And then Judas Maccabeus gathered money to be sent to Jerusalem to offer. And this is what the narrator says at the end, 
If he did not believe that the dead would be raised to life, it would have been foolish and a useless thing for him to offer the sacrifices. In our, from the very early church, if we went into the catacombs, you would find on the walls people who had written, after we have died, do not forget us in prayer. And therefore, in the Eucharistic prayer, we pray for all those who have gone before us marked with the sign of peace, with the sign of faith. May they see you face to face. St. Augustine tells us about his mother, St. Monica. St. Monica said, look, bury me wherever you want, but do not forget me at the altar. Both my mother and my grandmother never read St. Augustine. They knew about St. Augustine and St. Monica, but they said the very same prayer as St. Monica, both my mother and my grandmother. My grandmother lived for five years after I was a date, and every year when I would celebrate Mass with her, she would say, don't forget, when I die, you're supposed to say a Mass for me. She believed that because her grandson was a priest, she got a card which says, go past, and a free entry into heaven. She must have been playing too many Monopoly games. But the fact is, she, like Job, believed my Redeemer lives, and in my flesh I will see my God. So what does our Catholic Church tell us? We have three different councils that actually spoke about taking care and praying for those who have died. We had the Council of Ephesus in 325, and then in the year 15, 1431, two big things happened. One, the English burnt St. Joan of Arc at, the cro at a stake at Rouen in France. She had come from northern France, and at the age of 19, they believed that she was a witch, and they burnt her there but she was called by God to lead the forces. She didn't actually fight in that war. But that is a thing that dominates that. What we don't realize is that in the same year in Italy at the Council of Florence, they also made a decree or promulgated a decree to pray for those who have departed. And then finally in the, in the Council of Trent in 1545, once again, it recommended to all of us. And then we don't have to go back into the past alone. If you pick up our Catholic Catechism, it tells us it is a very healthy and sane and useful thing to do, to make prayers, to, make, to say prayers, to make sacrifices, and to remember those who have died. Memento mori. Let us not forget those who have died. And in the Catholic Catechism in 1031, we are told that Jesus said, there are many people who are pardoned. No, there, Jesus said, those who sin against the Holy Spirit will not be pardoned in this life or in the life to come, which goes to show that some of our sins are pardoned here and in the life to come before we enter heaven, there are more sins to be pardoned. How do we understand that? I leave it in the hands of God and our theologians. But it only shows us that it is so very important for us never to forget those who have gone before us marked in the sign of peace. And so for all our audience on television, over 90,000 of them, we pray in a very special way for all your relatives and friends who have died on this day and all through November. And so as we continue to pray for them, according to the councils, according to Christian tradition, according to the sensum fidelium, as they say, the, the general sense of our Catholic population, we pray in a very special way. And so we can, during this time, meditate on Job, who remembered and said that in spite of all the difficulties he had, lost his wealth, lost his family, lost his livestock, he said, I trust. I know my Redeemer lives. Or we can remember Corinthians, where Adam caused us. He was a metaphor of our death because of sin. But Christ is the reality of our salvation. 
because Christ suffered in death, you and I, you and I have hope that when we die, we know we will see the Lord in our flesh. Or oh, finally, what Jesus tells us in the gospel, let us die to the egos of this world. Let us die to the values of this world so that we may live forever to, to values that are eternal. God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together. And so now, we pray in a very special way for all those who are listed in the daily televised mass book of remembrance, for all who have died, and for those no one prays for, for the souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We ask the Heavenly Father to grant eternal rest to all our relatives and friends, to those we have just mentioned in the Book of Remembrance, and to let the perpetual light shine on them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for our church, for, for Pope Francis and all, for all our spiritual leaders throughout the world to continue to guide us on this journey of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving to our sponsors and for the repose of the soul of Annie Van Woorden and Richard Crosby, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts you have given us and we ask you to grant eternal rest to our faithful departed through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Bless Bless be God forever. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and your hands for the praise and the Lord's name, for our good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servants may take up you may be taken up into glory with your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, Jesus who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. In him, the hope of the blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all those whose names are mentioned in the Book of Remembrance, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Let us pray for peace, and especially peace for the faithful departed. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And wherever you are, share with one another a sign of that peace and friendship.
behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. <coughs> Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servants, that cleansed by the paschal mysteries, they may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. <laughs> 